All right, so here we go. This is the shop. This is the workshop. This place used to be a old uh, garage that was probably used for storage. We're not quite sure what this place was used for. I think one time we put, we parked our car in here before we turned it into this, but it was right when we first moved into this house. Anyways, last summer we <coughs> finally put it together so it would be a functioning workshop for me because I was originally in the corner of my husband's uh, man cave and <coughs> I had this sweet little cat named JJ and she loved to get into things and she loved to um, bite the roses off my pieces. And so I have to wrap, I had to wrap everything like in about two layers of bed sheets. And that got tiresome because it was just, you know, the minute I took those sheets down, boom, there she was. Anyways, um, this is where I work. So this is where all the dirty work is done. I have, like I said, I have two places. I have the downtown studio across from the museum. And that's more like a showroom, finished work. Um, I do work over there. I do take some of these pieces with me to work when I'm open on weekends. And it's just to give people an opportunity to see process, you know, something in process. I, you know, I think it comes from working with Roger where he would always say, you know, you want Roger Allen, you want, you know, people to see you working, you know, they don't want you to see him staring off the space, but, and you, you know, you might as well utilize good time. So I take some of these pieces sometime with me and work on them for people who come in for a visit and that way they can see part of the process of making these pieces. Anyways, um, this is my work table and this is right now I'm in the process. I'm kind of splitting my time actually. I'm splitting my time between working in wet uh, putting some boxes together and working on the shrine right here and I'm also doing uh, painting so early in the, like this morning I got up really early and spent the early morning uh, painting uh, some pieces and so I'm hoping to have most of these if not all of these uh, ready for the virtual festival and I'm excited about that I, I, it's going to be really different and it's definitely pushing me out of my comfort zone just like making this video um, but that's okay you know um we, we got to adjust for the times. We got to, got to, you know, got to do what we can do uh, to keep going, you know. And I know I've been thankful because the support this summer has been phenomenal. Good new um, opportunities, new gallery. So that's been great. Um, this is my drying rack. This is where I keep a lot of stuff that's ready to be painted, uh, stuff that's drying out, stuff that needs to be worked on. Right now, the shrine has been moved over here, and we'll get to that here in a minute. But these are all my shrines, um, smaller shrines. That one back over there is like the biggest one, but I'll tell you about it in a minute. Um, I like to keep some of these on hand. Um, one, they take a really long time to make. And so it's kind of nice to have at least a dozen of them on hand from di with different sizes and different shapes. And because you never know when somebody's gonna wanna order one, uh, a show comes up or a gallery calls and says, hey, I need two shrines, three sizes, whatever. They're selling out really quick. And I've, you know, I've been able, you know, I've saved time by, you know, having to get to skip over this process of making them and letting them dry slowly to where they're already, they're ready to go. All I have to do is just the inside, the little inside components. And I try to keep them not generic. I don't want to say generic, but I like to keep the top parts just so that those will work with anything that I decide I want to put inside here. Whether, oh, there's a dead spider. I have daddy long legs in this shop and I don't mind them. We get along really well. They take care of the annoying flies and mosquitoes sometime, and they have a lovely diet of roly polies. And then when they get ready to die, they crawl into my shrines and they shrivel up. I, it's okay, that's cool. Anyhow, <laughs> neither here nor there, but I think it's funny when I walk in and find them inside that it doesn't matter. They, I never find them on the ground. I find them inside my shrines. So they must know these are the, these are the special places. Anyhow, I may have to do a shrine with a spider in it. Ooh, ooh. I may have to do them their own little shrine. Aw. Anyways. <laughs> Anyhow, um, so I keep them to where they're pretty easy, where I can, you know, easily put a mermaid in there, a mariachi in there, uh, a dan whatever, dancer, whatever, a heart, just whatever, you know, I want to put in there. And I always go ahead and put more. If you ever get a shrine and it's only got one, one little, you know, galaveta in there, and you see these two holes, it's because I wasn't quite sure what was gonna go in there, but I wanted to give myself an opportunity in case I decided to say, oh, you know what would be so cool is to put a moon or a sun or an angel or whatever, you know, hanging off these two sides. Too bad I don't have a hole in there. And it also keeps me from having to drill another hole and risk breaking the whole thing. So I just leave the option for another something to hang down, be it one skeleton or two or, you know, you know what I mean. And these are the smaller ones. These are my tinier ones. And I've done these really cool 
heart-shaped ones, and these have been so much fun to do. They don't take as long. Um, they, I actually got the shape from, well, I would say a, a, a <clears throat> Valentine's Day, a ch like the individual chocolate heart uh, boxes of chocolates that you get for Valentine's Day, but it's actually from a cookie cutter. And the idea was given to me or suggested to me by the gallery owner in Albuquerque when he wanted to know if I could do heart-shaped shrines, and so I started doing these. And they've been, they've been fun to do, a lot of fun to do. And um, so anyways, there's those. And this one was supposed to go to a gallery, that one was supposed to go to a gallery, but ran out of time, so replaced those two pieces with something else and thought, well, I'll just save this for the next, for the next go round, which is now, or it could be, who knows what. Um, these are some little wall shrines, uh, I'm not wall shrines, wall ornaments, and some pieces that like to pop up, but I'll fix those in a little bit some little pendants I'm kind of playing with those pendants I don't know I think I know what I need to do with them so anyways um but these are really cool they started off as these you know rounded pieces and these were also going to uh, to Albuquerque but people were kind of confused with the big roundy bulby ones and so the gallery owner would suggest you know why don't you just make them flat and that way people know that oh it hangs on your wall okay and so sometimes I build them up. I'll put like a little skull, a little skull head on here. I think I did one with bumblebees one time. It was super cute. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna try and paint some. Just paint some flat ones. And so I did this one and Frida and a Lucha Libra one. You know, just have some fun. And they're doing pretty good. So they come out really cute. I like the 3D ones. I like it when they have like the skulls on them. And I like the rounded ones too. But you know, whatever people want is what they get. Anyways. Um, some more red stuff. Um, I don't know why I got away from doing red clay. It was, it's such a beautiful color and it's fun and kind of saves me some time. I'm going all the way to the ends with um, with the color and I can kind of just let the red show through and it's just such a beautiful color. I need to, I need to do some more. And so I'll also be doing um, some really cool red earrings. These are some really pretty earrings I'm excited about. So I'll we'll have those ready in time for the virtual festival. Um, some red cups and all that. This right up here, my little JJ, the one that, you know, I had to wrap and keep things away. She passed away in May, uh, way too soon. I was just, I'm still so sad about it. But anyways, this is her cute little urn. I couldn't bear to bury her, so I had her cremated and I made her a special little urn with lots of beautiful red roses. And when I finally get it painted and fired and all that good stuff and I put her ashes inside, I am going to throw in some clay roses that she loved to chew on those and eat them. So anyways, and so that's the bigger drying rack right here. So I'll kind of step back a little bit so we can see. Lots of, lots of stuff to paint up, lots of inventory. All right, so this one is a big giant shrine. Um, been working on this one for a while. The, the customer is so patient and he's from Napa and this is an 18 by 18 shrine that is the biggest one I've ever done. Um, it's got some little, has some little issues right there. So I'm, Patching those up with that lovely stuff that I love so much. The magic clay, that clay glue. I love that stuff. Oh, so it has saved me so many times, especially while doing these pieces. Um, anyway, so I'm going to be doing some sparrows in the corner. I, had, I made this really cool mold for some sparrows from a, from a brass uh, sparrow that I found in a thrift store. And so I turned it around, made a mold out of it. And I, it's going to work. It's going to work. I'm excited about it. I just need to learn how to reverse them so I can have one flying this way and one flying that way. And, same here, and I'm not quite sure what I'm going to put all the way around it. I'm, it's got so much opportunity, so it's going to be fun to just play with all different kinds of bumblebees and butterflies. And I don't know if I said earlier, but this is going to be a St. Francis of Assisi um, shrine. So I'm looking forward to seeing this one complete it. Fingers are crossed, nothing happens, you know, um, that it fires beautifully and safely. And like I said, it's the biggest one I've done yet. It's an 18 by 18. I'm very happy with the way it's turning out. And these right here, it's scalloped because I want it to look like it has, um, like he's standing in the clouds, you know, and the birds are over here and on top. And I don't know, I'm so stoked about this piece. Oh, it's so beautiful. I'm um, making some boxes for the show, for the virtual show. I'm hoping to have these done. They don't take as long as the shines. They, uh, they're a little bit, a little bit quicker, a little bit faster, easier to paint. Um, it's the lids that take the longest. Uh, not because it takes long to make them, it's deciding on what goes on top. And working on this stuff right here. Um, over here is my inspirational wall. Um, I have this really cool quote right here. I love this quote. Um, I put it right in front of me so when I want to slack off, I just look at it and go, oh, you better get your ass in gear. Pardon my French for anybody sensitive. There's my little JJ's ashes. She kind of hangs out with me. So she keeps me company. Um, 
I'm getting older, so I lose track of everything. So I have to keep a list of my regular inventory, things that go to my uh, place in Santisima. Um, right now, I'm in a show in um, at the Museum of Fine Arts, and so these were the pieces I wanted to put in, but you know, I got ambitious, and they were like, "Hey, there's 22 other people that also want to hang some work." It's a great show. I have yet to go see it. I know I'm so naughty of me, but I'm kind of busy, um, so I haven't been able to make it. I've seen pictures of it; looks fabulous. And if you're in San Angelo, go check out that show. That show right there is it's awesome. It's uh, Texas True. Um, these are I like to just kind of jot down uh, ideas for shrines. This was Please Scream Inside Your Heart, and it's I I want it. It's the Disneyland. I want to say in Japan. I could be wrong, but with this whole COVID thing, they didn't want you know. They didn't want people screaming because, you know, when you scream, you spit and germs go everywhere. So they advised everybody to please scream inside your heart. <laughs> it's just, I thought it was a joke, but it was actual suggestions from the government to please scream inside your heart <laughs> are the people who run Disney in, I guess, Japan. Sorry if I got that wrong. Not about this, because that, that is accurate. Anyways, um, these are my books. Uh, whenever I, you know, inspiration, when I need to find out about something, whatever. Always gotta have a good, good library in your in your studio. So whenever you need my little, I love little tchotchkes like this. I am such a tchotchke girl. Love them, all up there. Love them. When you go into my studio downtown, same thing. If you walk around, go to the bathroom or whatever, tchotchkes everywhere. All right. Um, this is my little altar to my grandfather. My little shrine. Um, when he passed away about four years ago, uh, no, six years, five, six years ago. Oh, six, six years ago. Sorry. Um, I, I requested a little bit of his sh uh, ashes, and so they gave him to me in a little pill bottle. And I finally, just I think last summer, maybe earlier in the spring, finally got his urn finished. Poor My poor grandpa, he was in a pill bottle for five, six years, and finally got him into his own little urn, um, sealed up, and this is his World War II banner. And the reason I did this is, you know, not only because it's my grandfather, but because when I was little, I used to hang out with him in his workshop that was located behind his house. And so when I put my workshop together, which is behind my house, um, I thought, you know, this is great. You know, I get to greet his ashes every morning and he gets to hang out with me. And he's, you know, he didn't, he, I don't know, he had a, suffered from depression. So I like the fact that I put him in something very vibrant and bright and happy and just, you know, I wanted him to be in his happy place. So anyways, hopefully he's he likes it. I don't know. <laughs> I have yet to come in here and find anything kicked over, so I guess he's happy. Um, for those of you familiar with Millicent Bundick, this is her awesome painting. Um, I got this. We did this for a trade, and I've held on to this painting for so long, and I couldn't wait till the day that we got this shop put together so that I could hang up this painting. You know, I knew I was going to put it up in the shop so that she's with me all the time, even though she's not doing well. She. Every, anybody who knows Millicent, you know her work. I am about to explain her stuff to you. She's phenomenal and amazing. And if you don't know about Millicent Bundit, uh, chances are you know somebody who knows her and her work. She's just, I, we considered her a genius. And to this day, forever, she will always be known as a genius as far as her work is concerned. Um, I had the opportunity to work with her, but this is one of her pictures that I do keep with me to remind me of, you know, the fun times we had when we worked, both worked at the Chicken Farm Arts Center and she just had such an amazing personality and sense of humor. She, chip glue. We will always have chip glue, Millicent. I love you, baby. Uh, Linda Gossett, just because. I love it. It's beautiful. My little bee, my little cicada, because they were very active this summer. Um, this is my frustration corner where I like to come and pummel on this for a bit. Um, it's deflated right now. I've been busy, so I haven't had time to take out my frustrations on it lately. So it looks a little deflated, but I don't know, man, with the way things are going, I might be pummeling on this again soon, given the state of situations right now. But anyways, <clears throat> neither here nor there. Um, excellent for, like I said, getting your frustrations out. All right, so gotta wrap up this tour pretty quick. Um, these are some finished pieces that are ready to be fired. I'm hoping to have this all filled up with product here in a week or two, uh, ready to be fired and ready to go. Um, this is my painting table. That's where I paint uh, all my stuff. I'll show you real quick. And I showed you that. But, yep. Yeah. Oh, uh, real quick. This is what those ornaments used to look like. So, the flat ones that I was talking about. Yeah, kind of puffy. Yes, Madonna's in here. How awesome is that? I have yet to hang her up. And before I have to wrap up this fabulous video, show you my calendar out. 
please excuse a mess. We are in the, pos in the process of remodeling, but my kilns are right there. Yep, one covered up, one, ex one out, but right now we're in the process of adding this awesome awning and some other things to the to the house because the house needs much, much. Oh, one more thing. Also, this fabulous thing it used to be my grandfather's and my aunt gave it to me. So this is my grandfather's old radio that I used to push all the buttons when I was a little girl. So it's fitting that his stereo is underneath my stereo and then he's right there. So it works out. Okay, so that concludes this fabulous little tour of my shop. Um, I kind of wanted to do one of the downtown one, but we ran out of space. <laughs> ran, yeah, I ran out of space on this video. It's only supposed to be 15 minutes long and I'm going into 16 minutes. All right. Well, if you have any questions or you want to see the downtown studio or you want to reach out about some of anything that you've seen here, please reach out to me. You can reach out to me through Facebook. I'm, I'm Michelle Guavez Artworks or on Instagram. My handle is MCC, wait, MC Clayworks, but it should be on the, on the website. All right. Thank you so much for giving me your time. Thank you for taking this tour with me. Let's just, you know, we'll keep this going and see what happens this year. And I can't wait to see everybody next year. Oh my gosh, hugs for everybody next year. Let's hope the cootie thing is gone by then. And even if we have to wear masks, it doesn't matter. I just miss everybody's faces. I'm going to miss all my regular people this year. Um, if you have anything special that you're wanting to see or request, whatever, shoot me a message, let me know, and I'll see what I can do to have that ready for you by that by the time the festival goes up okay blessings to everyone stay healthy stay safe stay sane i love you guys thank you for your patience thank you for following us thank you for following me thank you for supporting this weirdo i always say that because you know um anyways thank y'all so much and i look forward to seeing everybody very very soon i love you all all right take care all right bye bye